Hey guys, buying the HP Z440, I think that was one of my best purchases this year. I paid around 280 Australian dollars, which converts to maybe 180 US dollars, including free shipping to a regional area, so that's pretty good. Now, this is a workstation, and in this video I will explain to you what that means, uh, what are the benefits, it's quite different to buying a consumer uh, computer or building a consumer computer yourself. So we have benchmarks, uh, we've got gameplay, power consumption figures. I have upgraded a few aspects of this computer to make it more suitable for what I do. And there are also a few weaknesses which I also want to touch on, but I really love this computer. It's my main computer. I do all my video editing here and all my work stuff. So yep, let's check it out. Power button with a white LED, hard drive activity LED. We're getting four five gigabit USB 3 ports. This one has fast charging, a TRRS headset connector, and here a microphone port. This one doesn't work for me, so I just use the headset port. Two external five and a quarter inch drive base, as well as mine came with a slim optical disk drive. Here goes your power. Power button at the back, two PS2, two USB 2 with 480 megabit, four USB 3 with five gigabit, gigabit ethernet. This is a controller from Intel and we have line out and line in. Here we can see the machine from the inside and I will now talk about all the advantages. The first thing is these are built like tanks and they're really reliable. These are not machines you can buy on the weekend at Harvey Norman or JB Hi-Fi. These are for corporate customers that demand uptime, reliability, they have expensive service contracts and they pay a huge premium for this computer. So everything is over-engineered in terms of reliability and look at the cable management, it's nice and neat and these machines are all about reliability. My machine came with a single 8 gigabyte RAM module. I've upgraded it to 64 gigabytes in quad channel configuration. These memory modules are registered ECC. ECC means they are more reliable. They can detect and correct errors with the RAM. For example, if a bit flips from zero to one on a normal standard computer, that can cause a blue screen, maybe a data corruption or a crash. Quad channel means double the memory bandwidth compared to dual channel. These modules run at only 2400 megahertz, so fairly low frequency, but four of them, you get the equivalent memory bandwidth as if you had 4800 megahertz in dual channel. Be aware that if you install eight memory modules, the machine will not boot until you install a memory cooling shroud. So that's optional, be aware of that. Another advantage is that we're getting a lot of ports connected directly to the CPU. This matters if you're using things like capture cards, a RAID controller, 10 gigabit ethernet, and you want maximum throughput without any compromises. The, the two X16 and the X8 slot, these are the ones connected directly to the CPU, whereas the uh, X1 and the X4, these go through the chipset, just like the PCI port, the onboard LAN controller, uh, the SATA ports, or the USB ports. So they share the bandwidth uh, with each other. What is nice, you're getting an entire computer ready to go with CPU, RAM, storage, a video card, and also a Windows license. The machine came with this NVIDIA Quadro. It's a K2200. This is basically a NVIDIA GDX750 Ti with four gigabytes of VRAM and not bad. You can definitely play games on this, but I did upgrade this video card to a GDX1650. So that's what we're using in this video. Also four gigs of VRAM and this one has a six pin power connector. The computer has two six pin connectors right here. So you can actually upgrade some fairly capable video cards. What surprised me was how quiet this machine is. There's a cooling fan at the front, at the rear, and another fan for the CPU cooler. And yeah, in terms of noise, this machine is whisper quiet. In fact, the GDX 1650 is the loudest uh, fan in this computer. Um, yeah, so I'm actually looking at getting another video card uh, that addresses that issue 
to a certain degree. I bought the cheapest machine because I wanted to upgrade it anyway. It came with a mechanical hard drive. Avoid these at all costs. The best upgrade you can do to an older machine is giving it a SSD. And you have choices here. You can use a standard two and a half inch SATA SSD. You just need like a, an adapter to install it into uh, two of the internal drive bays. If you're interested in NVMe, PCI Express M.2, yes, you can buy PCI Express adapters and the machine will boot from those drives, but you will lose one of the PCI Express slots. And I've also upgraded the processor. One really fun aspect about these workstations is upgrading them, finding out what sort of uh, CPUs, what sort of RAM is supported and then maxing it out. I upgraded from a 4 core 8 thread Xeon. It came with a 1620 V4. Not a bad machine. Uh, decent clock speed, but a low core count. I wanted something with more cores for my video editing, so I bought a Xeon 2699 V3. That one has 18 threads, and in terms of video editing, it's a dream to use this computer. Now let's run a few benchmarks. We've got Cinebench R15, 20 and R23 as well as some gameplay. This is with the machine upgraded. In Cinebench R15 we're getting 2401 for the multi and 135 for the single core. In R20 5166 for the multi core and 288 for the single core. And in R23 we're getting 13224 for the multi core and 742 points for the single core. Now it's time to test some games. Because I only have a NVIDIA GeForce GDX 1650, which is not a high-end video card, we're testing everything at 720p. And this is to ensure that we're actually evaluating the system, meaning if you want a higher resolution, install a better graphics card. Because we're testing at 720p, if you buy a video card that's double the speed, you will get similar performance at 1440p. And if you're installing a graphics card that is three times the performance of the 1650, you should get similar performance at 4K. Uh, that's an assumption. I'm not 100% sure. So uh, if you have some thoughts about that, please share them down below in the comments. Anyway, Dirt 3 is next. Ultra details and we're getting over 200 FPS. So this is a very good start. Here we have Doom 720p Ultra Preset Vulkan API around 200 FPS. This is really amazing performance and actually surpassed my expectation. I have worked with Haswell processors before and I believe what's happening here is that this CPU has 45 megabytes of level 3 cache and I think this comes into play here similar to the uh, that AMD gaming CPU that has large uh, L3 cache. Half-Life 2 is an older game, 720p, all details maxed out. 4x anti-aliasing, 16x and isotropic filtering, around 300 FPS, gotta be happy with that. In Rise of the Tomb Raider I got a VRAM warning, I tried to use very high details but the video card only has 4 gig of VRAM so we are testing with high preset and excellent performance. Uh, between 60 and 100 FPS is what I'm seeing and look at the GPU load, even at 720p the video card is holding back this system it's packed at around 98%. We can see a similar performance in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 720p, high details, between 60 and 100 FPS, with the GPU utilized at 98%. It runs Strange Brigade, 720p, high details, and we're getting also a VRAM warning with Ultra, with the Ultra preset, so that's why we're testing at high details. Over 150 FPS, gotta be happy with that. Cyberpunk 2077 is next. This represents a modern AAA game, 720p, with the high preset, and the average FPS in the benchmark is 66. So that's actually pretty good, but in the beginning of the benchmark scene, it does dip below 60. The Witcher 3 is a popular game, a little bit older, 720p ultra details, with the Nvidia hair effects, uh, just under 60, but when you turn that off in the game, we're getting over 60 FPS. I was really surprised how well it runs Far Cry 5, which has an engine that actually prefers high IPC processors, but look at that, 720p, ultra details, 
and it runs really well. GTA 5 is another game that you guys wanted to see. 720p with the details set to very high and there are lots of options. And also I think I've set the uh, shadow to soft and we're running some HBO as well. And yeah, well over 60 FPS. So also decent performance. Not a bad computer, but does it run Crisis? 720p, very high details. This is Crisis and it does a decent job. Also, this surprises me. Uh, Crisis is a game that usually doesn't do too well on these workstation processes because of the low clock speed, but maybe once again the high level 3 cache kicks in and actually extracts some additional performance. But definitely, yes, it runs Crisis. I measured the power consumption with a power meter of the entire computer sitting idle on the desktop. And this is with all the upgrades done. Sitting idle on the desktop around 54 watts is what I saw, but running Cinebench around 240 watts. So quite a bit higher. In games, it depends on the graphics card and what resolution and settings you will play at. So the power consumption can be higher, but be aware that video encoding or rendering or running a Cinebench is a lot more demanding on the CPU compared to running a game. I would like to share a few resources that are really handy. The first one is the HP support website. All the drivers are available, ready to download, including the BIOS. And we can see the uh, most recent BIOS is from May of 2022, which is actually pretty decent. Now with Windows 10, the uh, Windows update will pick up all the drivers. So there's actually no need to download and install all these drivers. But look at that, even firmware for like the uh, optical drive and some of the video cards. So that is quite interesting. The maintenance and service guide, it's a PDF document that you can download. Also highly recommended, covers the Z440 as well as two other workstations from the same series. And here you find information, how to enter the BIOS, how to upgrade the RAM, all the ports, front and back of the machine, schematics of all the components. Uh, we've got a main board diagram with uh, labels for all the ports and interfaces and a chipset diagram. So definitely, uh, before you decide to buy the machine, study this document. It will give you a very good idea of uh, what's available with this machine. The Z440 supports two generations of processors. We've got the Xeon processors ending with a V3. These are from the Haswell generation. And then we've got the Xeon processors ending with V4. These ones are from Broadwell. The Broadwell generation is newer, uh, more efficient, so they consume less power. They also have the RAM running at a slightly higher frequency, but these are quite sought after and you will find the prices on the V4 uh, Broadwell processors a lot higher. So if you're after value, I recommend go for V3 as well. I spend a lot of time on Wikipedia and I'm obsessing over the specifications of the CPUs and try to pick which one is the best. And there are, I'll give you some tips. There are two main series. The first one, is the 1600 series. These are low, lower core count, but high frequency. These are excellent for gaming. For example, let's have a look. Two, two CPUs I can recommend is the uh, 1630 and the 1650 with four and six cores, 3.7, 3.5 gigahertz. These are really decent for games. For uh, multitasking and productivity, you wanna look at the 2600 series. Here you get high core counts, but look at the clock speed. Uh, even with the turbo, the clock speed is a lot lower. So these might not be as strong in gaming. On the flip side, they have more cache. So it's a bit of a trade-off. And I do recommend you go after the high TDP uh, CPUs. Uh, the TDP numbers, they don't really translate one-to-one -to, -one to what you see with a power meter at the wall. But in general, the higher TDP CPUs, they can turbo faster. The processor I bought, I spoiled myself. That is the Xeon 2699 V3 with 18 cores. And it's got a massive 45 megabytes of level three cache. And maybe that's the reason why this processor performs pretty well in games despite a fairly low clock speed. 
So guys, you can tell I'm pretty excited about this machine. It's my daily driver and I run basically this channel on this computer and yeah, the reliability is outstanding. We've got the ECC registered RAM, quad channel memory, everything is well documented. All the downloads are still available. It's built like a tank. Gaming, yes, you can play many games on this machine. Just have to install a decent graphics card. Um, it has a few weaknesses, which is the single threaded performance and not the latest PCI Express Gen 4. But you have to realize this is quite an old computer. And for, yeah, 280 Aussie dollars, 180 US dollars, you get an entire computer ready to go, including a Windows 10 license. So the value is definitely there. If you like OEM machines, I have two videos for you. One covers a HP and the other one a Dell Optiplex. And that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.